immediately but why should because i'm going to say please drop dead i don't do requests this podcast episode will be about a man that has one of the strongest mentalities I'm Sylvia Dos Santos, and this is my podcast, and I'm going to show you why he is not just a body, he is one of the most inspiring men of all time, and just keep me company, and you will agree with me. Into the tunnel. Get to the chopper! Did not make it, Victor. Who married? Is it a better divorce? Not a tumor. Not a tumor at all. Chill out. What? Stop cheering me on. No problem. All. This for sleeping with my wife. The damn mini van. Grant me revenge. If you do not listen, then the hell with you. The hell with you. The hell with you. Who the hell are you? My name is John. Next.
Dagger, Arnold, Alois, Oalwa, Schwarzenegger, German, German, Buddies, an Austri Austrian, American actor, filmmaker, and businessman, author, former politician, and professional bodybuilder. You know, it is the most famous bodybuilder, the most famous action movie of all time, alongside with some of my favorite Sly Stallone and many others, this really is in everything, but he is the most famous. He is. He was born in July 30th, 1947, and he is one of my favorite actors of all time. Stay tuned for more info about one of the most recent Republican gov governor of California. For now, cue the music. I can be is the same as everybody else. I hate that, said Arnold Schwarzenegger on an interview. Actor, producer, businessman, philanthropist, activist, bodybuilder, politician, for an immigrant who was initially known primarily for his ability to lift very heavy things. Arnold Schwarzenegger has had an incredible life that has included being one of the biggest action stars the world has ever known as well as serving two terms as the governor of California. Well, you know that Arnold Schwarzenegger publicly said he wished to be President of the United States of America, but the law doesn't allow that. Apparently, the law allowed Austrian-American Arnold Schwarzenegger to be Governor of California, 
but there are some, you know, uh, difficulties to be the actual president of the United States of America. But tell me, between Trump and Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, who would you pick? Because, you know, everybody wants to rule the world. Braunschweiger. Danger is my trade. Remember, I can break your neck like a chicken. You are mine now. You belong to me. You're not gonna have your mommy slam behind you anymore and wipe your little douches. No more complaining. No more Mr. Kim left to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You should not drink and bake. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. That is a fucking asshole. Assholes. Dickheads. Come back. Sluts. Bastards. One. Well, this fight, this fight, being from Austria, he is the human embodiment of the American dream. You may agree or not. But he is the human embodiment of the American dream. In a few minutes, 
Here are a few things you may not have known about the governator. The mm, governator. Hmm. What? Uh, what is going to be next? Governator. It's on purpose that I'm saying governator and not governor. Stick around to find out why. For now, George Harrison got my mind set on you. Make my day, or I'm your worst nightmare. Well, listen to this one. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> you think this is the real Quaid? It is. You are not sending me to the cooler. I have my orders. Oh, my God! I got yeah, I'm a police officer. There's an arrest. Please! I'm a cop, you idiot. Detective John Kimball. His men is under arrest. Solomon, I promised to kill you last. That's right, Major. You did. I lied. No sequel for you. And now Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger has apparently been lobbying legislators for a possible constitutional change that would allow him to run for President of the United States of America. Or at least it's been considering filing a legal challenge, you know. He will not stop until he reaches his goal of being the next President of the United States of America. And the Simpsons already predicted that Donald Trump would be the President, so if he is the President, so they were right about that. And uh, perhaps they can go two for two. Who knows? Well, we know Arnold Schwarzenegger won't give it up. He won't give it up. And, um, you know, he's quite a ladies' man. The governator, exterminator, terminator. I'm just playing with words right now. And, uh... You cold bladder bastard. I'll tell you what I think of it. I live to see you eat that contract. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine! Ah! You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger um, was in an open uh, relationship with Sue Murray uh, Beverly Hills addresses assistant when he met the love of his life I believe so to be the love of his life Maria Shriver at a tennis tournament he dated both women for a year until Mary issued an ultimatum it's me or Maria Shriver and Schwarzenegger ended up marrying Shriver well so, oopsies, he chose the love of his life, Maria Shriver. I do, I do. Turtles, do. happy together. It's only right to think about the girl you love and hold her too happy together. If I should call you up, invest a dime, 
And you say you belong to me Still so lose my mind Imagine how the world could be So very fine So happy together No matter how they toss the dice, it had to be the only one for me is you and you for me. So happy together. It had to be the only one for me is you and you for me so happy together the dice it had to be the only one for me is you and you for me so happy together so happy together and how is the weather so happy together we're happy together going to tell you some of the things about um, Maria Shriver relationship with Arnold Schwarzenegger but I must tell you sadly they divorced each other in 2017 they had quite a life together more news about that to come after the song, Blondie, Heart of Glass. officially uh, 2017 but they apparently they divorced in 2011 well Arnold Schwarzenegger apparently reportedly dragged his feet for six years 
in a 400 million divorce from his first wife, Maria Shriver, despite dating Heather Mulligan for many years and having a secret love child with another woman. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a renowned Austrian-American actor, politician, businessman, author and former professional bodybuilder. He served as the governor of California from 2003 and 2011 till 2011 and made his name in Hollywood as the Terminator in the famous science fiction thriller series. In his personal life, like I was saying before, he married what he says is to be the love of his life, Maria Shriver, the niece of former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, another inspiring man whom I will do a podcast later. But the pair separated in 2011 after it was revealed he had fathered a child with another woman in 1997. So why was the divorce not finalized? Between 2011 to 2017, we don't know, sadly, but he's quite the ladies' man. But Maria Shriver is the one. But I'm going to talk about a few curiosities about Arnold Schwarzenegger and why. Do I admire him right now from seeing a video which I'm going to show you the voice of course of the video not the video itself but you will agree why he's so inspiring so the zombie time for the scene Like me, as he take us any time to show to show you what you need to live. Tell it to me slowly. Tell you why I really want to know. It's the time of the season for loving. Party pooper, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's father, Gustav, served in World War II as the uh, Aufsteidhebel. Oh my God, this is a German word. Let me try this again, shall I? Aufsteidhebel. <laughs> okay. After voluntarily joining the Nazi party in 1938, he was later discharged in 1941 after suffering a bout of malaria. How's that for a bummer to start this list? Not that we're in any way implying that the choices Arnold's father made are reflective of who Arnold is nowadays, but still you have to admit it's surprising to learn that one of your favorite actors is the son of a national socialist. And according to a Schwarzenegger, his parents, his parents were very strict in his education. Here's how he describes it. Back then in Austria, it was a very different world than it is now. If we did something bad, or we disobeyed our parents, the rod was not bad. Physical ramifications for bad behavior were just part of the, for the course 
in the Austria of Arnold's youth. Arnold's father, Gustav, had a clear preference for his eldest son, Meinhard. Meinhard? I don't know. It's German or Austrian, whatever. It apparently steamed from his unfounded suspicion that Arnold was not his biological son. Oof, that would make family dinners pretty brutal, wouldn't you say so? <laughs> so, Schwarzenegger's family was not well off, even by the standards of Austria between World War I and World War II. Arnold has recalled that one of the highlights of his youth was the day his family brought a refrigerator, as in the thing that keeps your food cold. Cool. More to come. For now, a very good song from the Beatles, one of my favorites, Obladi Obada. Remastered 2009. Enjoy. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger started lifting weights when he was 14 years old. How does that happen? Well, his dad wanted him to be a police officer, while his mother wanted him to go to trade school. Obviously, they weren't considering the third option, become and an internationally renowned renowned bodybuilder come political activist. Hence, with the wisdom of a 14-year-old, he decided to make a career out of being an absolutely massive human. <laughs> Seems to have worked out so far. Breaking, entering and lifting. What am I saying? He was so dedicated as a teenager that when the local gym was closed, he would break into workout. He would make me sick to miss a workout, said Arnold Schwarzenegger. I knew I couldn't look at myself in a mirror the next morning if I didn't do it. That sounds um, healthy. <laughs> healthy and brilliant. This man has a, a strong mind, one of the strongest minds you've ever, you will ever known in your entire life. Schwarzenegger served in the Austrian army for a year as a part of the mandatory service of all 18 year old Austrian males. He went AWOL during basic training so he could complete the junior Mr. Hero contest 
and spent a week in military prisons. Well, I didn't know this about the <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger life. Then skip Black Day in his first Mr. Universe competition. Schwarzenegger came second to Chester Yorton because Yorton's leg definition was judged by to be a superior with a new training regimen that sculpted his legs into textbook examples for perfect human legs. Schwarzenegger took his first Mr. Universe title at the age of 20, the youngest ever. Who knew? But let me say, before he did uh, Terminator, um, well, actually he did the Terminator and other movies, I guess, we can't call him uh, Anthony Hopkins or Daniel Day Lewis kind of actor. He himself knows that. We all know he isn't the, you know, the um, the, the actor like um, John Travolta or Nicolas Cage, uh, Daniel Day Lewis, Anthony Hopkins, Denzel Washington. He's not that type of actor. He never misled anyone by saying he was the best actor. No, no. In this, in his area uh, of um, fighting in action movies, he's one of the best in action movies. Psycho Killer, Talking Heads, The Terminator, I'll be back. Touch me, I'm a real life one. Schwarzenegger, whenever Arnold Schwarzenegger knew he was about to be cast for a part in the movie, he would learn. He would do anything to learn. He never stopped learning. That's why I admire him. His brilliance, his mind never stops learning and trying. It never, he never gives up. Back when Arnold was still adjusting to speaking a new language, he frequently told his English coach, Roger T. Field, about his biggest ambition, that he was going to become the greatest actor. That says a lot about Schwarzenegger's character. You know, at a time when people, when many people would be struggling with the simple hardship of getting used to life in a new country, Arnold was just far-fetched for his mind. Arnold was already dreaming about and working towards becoming an actor, a respected actor, or a action movie actor, in a language he barely knew, English, of course. At the age of 23, Schwarzenegger captured his first Mr. Olympia title, which he would go on to win another six times. Arnold got stoned, kind of. Arnold once won the Munich Stone Lifting Contest in which he lifted a 560 lap stone between his legs. Never heard of a stone lifting contest? Well, I didn't know so, but you've been missing out. It's basically exactly what it sounds like. Dozens of absolutely massive gentlemen struggled to lift up 
hunks of rock, all in front of an adoring crowd. It's basically the Geological Olympics. Wouldn't you say so? He is always learning and learning and learning. More to come after Chuck Berry, Johnny B. Good. Stick around. Deep down in Louisiana, close to New Orleans. Schwarzenegger was convinced to compete in his sixth Mr. Olympia in 1975 by filmmakers George Butler and Robert Fiore to make the bodybuilding documentary Pumping Iron. He handedly beat Lou Ferrigno, the future Hulk, and then retired from bodybuilding until 1980. Some say he's too tough to be an actor, but he's a learner. You have to give that to Arnold Schwarzenegger. He doesn't stop trying to learn every single day. He puts his mind into it. And he goes for it. I admire people like that. He sticks with a plan and he follows it with brilliance. No matter what he wants to do, he does it. If he wants to go to the moon, I have no doubt he will. <laughs> Russ Ballard, I can't hear you no more. Schwarzenegger, besides not giving up ever, he hasn't a plan B. 
he follows the plan A. More about that in the video I want to show you a bit later. But now I want to tell you that, you know, he doesn't listen to the so-called haters, the ones who said, you can't do that, you cannot do that, Arnold. He goes out and does it to show those people he can do it and he can do it all. Whatever he wants, he puts his heart into it and he does it. How many people, I'm asking you, as Sylvia, I'm asking you, my followers, how do you feel about that? How many people do you actually know that whatever they put their heart into it, they go out into the world and they do it. They don't uh, get excuses. They say, oh my God, I can't do this. Oh my God, this is too hard. This is too tough. No. People like Arnold Schwarzenegger, they go out and they do it. That's why I admire him. Oh my God, did I say that? I'm repeating it. I admire him because he's a dreamer, but mostly he's a doer. In 1993, he was named by the National Association, Association of Theatre Owners as the International Star of the Decade. Not bad for an immigrant with a weird shaped body, a too long name and a funny accent. Don't you think so? He's repeatedly showing us he can do it all. Pay attention to Arnold Schwarzenegger's motivational speech. You will cry by the none other. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have to listen carefully. So I worked in construction. I went to college. I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight. I went to acting class four times a week. So I did all of that. There was not one single minute that I wasted. And this is why I'm standing here today. Sure, it's work. It's not fun. So if you think about it, only a quarter of the people really enjoy what they're doing in life. So people always ask me, when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard? five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face. The others are working out just as hard as you do, and they look sour in the face. Why is that? And they told people all the time, I said, because to me, I'm shooting for a goal. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal this vision turn into reality. Every single set that I do, every repetition, every weight that I lift will get me a step closer to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2,000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. 
So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You've got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You've got to have a purpose. And Muhammad Ali worked his butt off. And I saw it firsthand. And I remember that there was a sports rider that was there in the gym when he was working out and he was doing sit-ups. And they asked him, how many sit-ups do you do? And he said, I don't start counting until it hurts. Now think about that. He doesn't start counting his sit-ups until he feels pain. That's when he starts counting. That is working hard. And so you can't get around the hard work. It doesn't matter who it is. Work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. You cannot get around. You have to work and work and work. Make sure of this and make sure of that and all that stuff. So it's work. And it drives me crazy when people say they don't have enough time to go to the gym for 45 minutes a day and work out. Or to do something for 45 minutes to an hour a day to improve. If it is physically improve or if it is mentally to improve. Imagine you read one hour a day about history. How much you will learn after 365 hours in one year. Think about if you study about the history of musicians, of composers, how much you would know. Imagine if you would work on a business, on some business that you want to develop every day for an hour. Imagine how further along you will go and get. So it drives me nuts because we have, when people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day, so it gives you still 18 hours. So there's someone shaking their head out here in front to say probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? Or just sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day, the average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours, so we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with the six hours? What do you do with the six hours? Then we eat a little bit, then we schmooze a little bit, talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I hate plan B. <laughs> and I tell you why. Because we have so many doubters, as I've said earlier, the, the no-sayers. We have so many of those people that say no and you can't do it, it's impossible. That is okay because we just turn off as I said earlier, and we listen and we hear the no being a yes, you can't do it, do it, you can't do it, and all of that. So that, that is possible to do that amongst all the negative people around you. But when you start doubting yourself, that's very dangerous. Because now what you're basically saying is, is that if my plan doesn't work, I have a fallback plan, I have a plan B. And that means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B, you're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A. And And it's very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net, because plan B becomes a safety net. It says that if I fail, then I fall and I get picked up and I have something else there that will, that will protect me. And that's not good, because people perform better when there's no safety net. People perform better in sports and everything else if you don't have a plan B. I'm telling you, I've never ever 
had a plan B. I said, I made a full commitment that I'm going to go and be a bodybuilding champion. I made a full commitment that I'm going to be in America. I made a full commitment that I'm going to get in the show business and I'm going to be a leading man. No matter what it takes, I will do the work. I will do the work over and over and over until I get it. And the same was in politics and everything like that. So to me, it is very dangerous to have a plan B because you're cutting yourself off from the chance of really succeeding. And the reason, one of the main reasons why people want to have a plan B is because they are worried about failing. What is if I fail, then I don't have anything else. Well, let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of failing because there's nothing wrong with failing. You have to fail in order to climb that ladder. There's no one that doesn't fail. Michael Jordan said in one of his interviews, when they said, you are unbelievable, you're the greatest basketball player of all times. I mean, tell me about that. And he says, well, you're just mentioning the successes. But he says, for me to become the greatest basketball player, I missed 9,000 shots when I was playing basketball at the NBA games. So during these games that he was so successful, he missed 9,000 shots. Does it make him a failure? No. He is one of the greatest basketball players of all times, but he failed 9,000 times. Do you get it? We all fail. It's okay. What is not okay is that when you fail, you stay down. Whoever stays down is a loser. And winners will fail and get up. Fail and get up. Fail and get up. You always get up. That is a winner. That is a winner. I failed in bodybuilding. I, failed. I lost bodybuilding competitions. I lost powerlifting competitions. I lost weightlifting competitions. I had movies that went in the toilet and that were terrible and got the worst reviews. And in politics, I remember, I had many of the initiatives on the ballot and we lost. My approval rating in California went down to 28% and then it went back up again and they won again the governorship. Hey, we all lose. We all have losses, this is okay. And this is why I say, don't be worried about losing because when you're afraid of losing, then you get frozen. You get stiff, you're not relaxed. You got to be, in order to perform well in anything, if it's in boxing or if it is on your job or with your thinking, it's only happening when you relax. So relax, it's okay to fail. Let's just go all out and give it everything that you got. That's what it is all about. So don't be afraid to fail. Well, did you know that Arnold Schwarzenegger had a few heart uh, problems and he never used it as an excuse for not doing what he wanted to do. Schwarzenegger was born with a big cuspid aortic valve, an aortic valve with only two leaflets. A normal aortic valve has three leaflets. In 1997, he opted for a replacement heart valve made of his own transplanted tissue, opting against a permanent mechanical valve as it would limit his ability to exercise and physical activity. Well, like David Bowie's song we're listening to, Space Oddity, he is not um, Arnold Schwarzenegger is not an, an extraterrestrial, <laughs> an alien, but 
Who knows? He could be. Because he's not normal. And I love that he is not normal. I love people who are not normal. Because normal people bored are boring. They bore me. You know? I'm that type of person who loves those persons, those people who excel themselves, who are winners and don't give up. And they say that they fail, like Arnold said on the video you listened earlier. The people fail. It's not, um, yes, it sucks to fail, but it happens. It's normal to fail, but you can get up and do your best. And who knows, you might surprise yourself and the whole wide world, like Arnold Schwarzenegger did and still does. He doesn't stop. Maybe he's an alien. <laughs> But you should know he is not the typical man you know. That's why he is worth knowing about. Go on Schwarzenegger.com, his website, to learn how he is, how he lives, and how he thinks mostly. Because why not learn from the best? And he is a tough guy. And he is one of the best, if you know what I mean. And he is not normal. No. He is an alien. <laughs> I believe so. Because the common mortal, like myself, I think, we worship these type of people that excel in everything they do. So why don't you learn from the best? Schwarzenegger, if you watch, I urge you to watch all the motivational videos. I really do. I advise you all to watch the videos, the motivational videos by Arnold Schwarzenegger. You won't regret it. I didn't regret it. I was the, the type of person who given uh, didn't give the time of the day to Arnold Schwarzenegger and when I saw a video from him his motivational speech he got me you know I can't shake it he is so inspiring I cannot shake it He's really one of the most inspiring brains I've ever listened or ever, ever known. You will agree with me. Don't think, uh, oh, he's not a good actor. No. Forget about it. Like the other said in The Godfather, forget about it. Don't, don't judge the person before you know him. You must know Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is worth knowing about. Watch the videos and listen to what he has to say. Please, you won't regret it. See me girl with
Be right back. I'll be back. Tell your mama. Tell your pa. I'll be back. I'll be right back. I'll be back. I'll send you back to Arkansas. I'll be back. I'll be back. Ha! You did not gonna say that, did you? That's what you always say. Same old phrases. I'll be back. In misery. Come on, baby, see about me now. Hey, hey. All right. See the girl with the red dress on. She can do the ballet all night long. I hope you enjoyed. Um, this podcast episode today about uh, this inspiring guy, this inspiring, inspiring man, Austrian American actor, producer, you name it, he has done it. He, like I said, doesn't stop. He'll be back with. So many other things he put his heart into it. He wants to do it. He does it. He doesn't stop. So it's like he says. He'll be back. And I'll be back soon enough with another podcast episode. Soon I'll be back. And... I hope you enjoyed. I honestly do. I did my best with what I've got. I'm recording from my home with all the sounds. <laughs> so, forgive me, okay? <laughs> but I enjoyed keeping you company. I hope you enjoyed keeping me company. Bye bye. See you next time. Hasta la vista, baby.